Amen. If you will, I want you to turn with me to Galatians, the second chapter. And what verse is that? The 20th. The 20th verse. Galatians. What did I say? Galatians 2.20. 2.20. That's what I thought I said. Galatians 2.20. Let us. Okay. I got all the tissue papers in here to keep my. My. Galatians 2.20. Okay. I need. What do you call those things? Markers? Yeah. Okay, let us look at Galatians 2.20. Did I give you the title of the message? I did. Okay, what was the title? Living by by God's faith, not yours. We're living by his faith. Hey, Francis. Galatians 2.20 reads, Paul said, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in this flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God. Darling, will you give me that in the uh, NLT version, please? Let's look at this. My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Paul is saying here, now that he has been born again, he's recognizing that the old man has been crucified with Christ. And that is his old nature God took out of him and replaced it with his Nature. So now, what he has is everything that God has. Even his faith is the faith of God. The Bible tells us that he has given to every man the measure of faith. As I was meditating on the word tonight, He gave us the measure of faith. And that measure of faith that he has given each one of us. Is there anybody in here who has not been born again? Right. So everyone in here has the same measure of faith. As Jesus Christ does. Everybody here has the same measure of faith as God himself has. Because Christ in you, Christ being in you, the Bible said the hope of glory, has you have the same spirit that he has. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead Where is he? He dwells in us. I want us to, I want us to understand that. His spirit is in us. The Bible says the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. And that spirit that he dwells, that dwells in you, he said that spirit is the spirit of life. We have the spirit of life. In us. Okay. He say, and it will quicken or it will make alive your bodies that are all messed up. Okay. We 
have the same spirit that God has in us. Aren't we glad about that? So if that be the case, then that means that whatever Jesus did when he was here, we can do it today. If he lived for his father God, we can do it also. If he believed Father God for whatever he wanted to believe him for, as long as it was uh, according to scripture, we can believe God for the same exact thing. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. You have his spirit in you. Yes. It is the spirit of life. Mm -hmm. Let's look at, you know, when you get so much word coming at you. You don't know where to stop first. So therefore, I'm going to rely on the Holy Spirit to help us here. Yes. Let's go to Ephesians 2.8. Ephesians 2.8. We're talking about living by God's faith. Living by God's faith. And the reason he wants us to live by God's faith, so it's evident if, if there's more than one faith going around here. So if it's God's faith, then there's also a human faith. Is that right? There's also a human faith. We also have human faith. And the human faith is limited now to the five senses. Mm -hmm. Your human faith says that when you walked in here, you sat on the chair with no thought of it not holding you up. Right. Human faith. Right. When you go outside today, yep. you're getting your car with no thought that your car is not going to take you to your destination. Right. You don't have, that's human faith. But then we have a God kind of faith. We have a God kind of faith. Let us look at Ephesians 2.20 again. Galatians 2.20. We didn't read Ephesians, did we? I tell you what, let us go back on over to G-E, go eat popcorn. Ephesians 2.8 says here, <laughs> I, I, gave, I, I gave somebody that analogy a long time ago. He says here, for by grace you have been saved through faith. Now listen to what Paul is saying. And that is not of yourself. It is the gift of God. Okay? By faith, you have been saved. And that is not of yourself. It is the gift of God. Remember when he said up here in, 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 in Galatians 2.20, he says that the life that I live now, I live it by the faith of who? The Son of God. He lives it by the faith of the Son of God. So if that be the case, then you too have that God kind of faith. Oh, yes. Praise God. You have that God kind of faith, yes. and that is the faith that you too have to live by. Right. Not your own faith, which is governed by the five senses, but the faith of God. But by the faith of God. And once I finish explaining this, you'll see the reason that you don't have to be all intimidated when it comes to walking by faith. Right. All right? You don't have to think twice about walking by faith. Because what you're going to walk by is going to be your father God's kind of faith. And his faith is this. It go, it's supernatural faith, mm -hmm. and it goes beyond the human faith. Mm -hmm. Human walks by what they see. The God kind of faith 
speaks. The God kind of faith says something. It talks. It calls things that don't exist as though they do. That's the God kind of faith. Paul said, I don't live by my own faith, but I live by the faith of God. And the faith of God is the faith that calls things that are not as though they were. They go above and beyond human faith. It's called God's supernatural faith. So when you get ready to find the scripture that promise you whatever you believe in God for, don't get intimidated when it talks about you walking by faith. It's not yours. It is not your faith. The Bible tells us it is a gift of God so that he has given you. It is his gift. Are we getting it? It is a gift that he gave you to walk by. Let's do Ephesians one more time to eight. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that faith is not of yourself. It is the gift of God. It is the gift of God. He gave you his faith so that you can live by. He didn't tell you to live by your own human faith. He said, live by my faith. Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, but yet not I that live, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live, I live it by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So when you are believing God for something, forget about your faith because your faith is human faith and it is Governed by the five senses, taste, uh, taste, feel, touch, and all that other stuff. But the supernatural faith is the faith of God, which goes beyond what you can ever even think or carry on with in your mind. You got God's faith. So that is the reason he tells us, you find the word of God on what he has promised you, and then you say what God said about that thing. And you won't have to worry if you're going to get the prayer answered or not. You will get it answered. Because God used the same faith over in Genesis 1 to bring the worlds into existence. The same word, the same faith, God used it. And what was it? He told Abraham, Abraham, I have made you the father of many nations. God, God's faith speaks. It says something. And he taught Abraham how to talk. The God kind of faith. And that is saying what I said, because if we say what anybody else says, then you are in error and you will not get. And this is the reason so many people don't get what they are trying to believe God for is because the faith, the faith problem. They have a faith problem. It's not your faith. When you go in here and see where he said, by whose stripes you are healed, then you got to do like Jesus did the devil. When he took him up on the high mountain and Satan said, fall down and worship me. And Jesus said, it is written. You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. We, we notice that Jesus didn't say anything about his own faith. He always talked about the faith of his father, and he said what his father said. So when you go before the Lord, and you believe in God for something, forget about your faith. You don't have what it takes. Jesus is your faith. He is the author and the finisher of your faith. He began this faith and he will end this faith. It's his faith 
that you are using. This is the reason that he tries to keep people out from the word of God so they don't get the knowledge of who they are. And he keeps them from meditating in the word of God so that they can get a deeper understanding of what God means when he said something. Because that's what faith, meditation will cause you to go into a deep, you remember the scripture says that the deep calls to the deep? Yeah, he's talking about his spirit. The spirit of man is going down deep and calling that, that which is in his spirit from God, knowing that I don't know anything, but I got to go deeper. I go deeper. By meditating and let God now speak to me. And then God will speak to you as you meditate, as you mutter, you ponder it, you're speaking it, you're confessing it. And then you're saying, oh, Father, I see what you mean here. Uh-huh. Like he did me today. In Romans 1 16, Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because that gospel is the power of God. The gospel is the power of God. And I went a little deeper into dissecting that. And the Holy Spirit said to me, the gospel of Jesus Christ, Paul said, I'm not ashamed of it, is the gospel of faith. It's the gospel of faith. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of that gospel because it is the power of God to my deliverance. I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God to my healing. I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it's the power of God unto my soundness and holiness of mind, to my joy and my peace and my hope. He said, because it is from faith to faith, from faith to faith. But don't be afraid of it because it's not your faith. It is God's faith that he imparted to you. And I'll prove it to you that it wasn't, it's not your faith. When you got born again, you didn't have any faith at all for getting saved. You couldn't get saved. The Bible said, how can any man come to Jesus Christ unless the father draws him? So what God did He gave you his faith in order for you to believe. You couldn't even believe for your salvation. He gave you the faith to believe for your salvation. That's the reason you say, Father, come into my heart and save me. He gave you the faith to believe that. Everything hinges on him, not you. Nothing. So don't be afraid when you said, Father, I thank and praise you in the name of Jesus that by the stripes of Jesus Christ, I am healed. And don't let intimidation, the devil come put thoughts in your mind about you're not healed. You tell him and pull him by the nap of the neck and let him know, I didn't say it, God said it. I didn't say it, God said this. God said I'm healed. And I am not ashamed of this gospel. Because it is the power of God, not mine, to my deliverance, to my salvation. So you take the word of God and you let it come out of your mouth. Speak the word of God. Speak the word of God. And when when Christ, when Satan began to see you meditating in the word of God and speaking the word of God, I'm here to tell you, you're just about entering into a contest. You're going to be in a contest because he's going to try to take that from you by putting thoughts in your mind 
and then calls you to speak what you're thinking. And Jesus said, take no thought, say it. Because every thought, if it's not of God, is evil. It is evil. Now let's look at something here. The faith or the human faith, everybody is born with that. Uh, to some degree, it is inherent. The human faith is. Everybody is born with some. Don't try to, to make it strong. You don't need to make it strong because it, it doesn't have any sense. It doesn't have any sense. You want to see what God has to say because this is how you have to live is by his faith. It is by his faith. And I tell you another thing, if you don't take the word of God, meditate upon it, get it down in your spirit, root it and ground it, you're going to be where you are today 10 years from now. Because it will not change a thing. Only the word of God will change the course of things. Because it is a higher faith, it is a supernatural faith. God intends for us to live the way that he has commanded us to live. And that is far beyond anything that you can ask or think. And we're going to take his word and that's what we're going to do. God's operate in supernatural. We are so limited when it comes to faith people. We are limited in the things that we can do. And the thing that, that's the reason, Lord have mercy. This is the reason when you sit down to read, anybody ever sat down to read and you find yourself? Yeah, uh-huh, like that. Wait a minute, you weren't doing that earlier. Only when you just picked up the Bible and you are going to begin to be. I want to tell you something. Your enemy is a smart cookie. He is smarter than anything you can ever dream of. He got you covered for 6,000 years, and you cannot figure him out. The only way that you're going to conquer him is you're going to have to conquer him through the word of God. That's the only way that you're going to get it. Let's look at uh, Romans 4.17. You're, you're going to have to. Let me tell you something. You are awesome people. You are so awesome. The devil knows it. But we got to know this too. Right. You, are, you are like little gods. Right. He knows you have the power. Right. He knows that you have the power of God because you got the spirit of God living in you. Right. And when it, where did I say go? Let's look at it. Romans 4.17, he reads, for by, no, Romans 4. <laughs> Oh, we knew that one was wrong. Right. Romans 4, 17. I love it. Praise the name of the Lord. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed. Now, actually what he is, uh, Paul is talking here, saying here he is. God said to Abraham, Abraham, I have already, past tense, made you the father of many nations. In the presence of him, in the presence of God, whom Abraham believed. God who gives life to the dead and calls those things that do not exist as though they did. The faith of God that you have, it goes into the invisible realm and it accesses 
those things in the invisible realm and bring them back into the natural realm. Okay? That's what the God kind of faith does. That's what called Abraham and Sarah to have the child. Because the word of God is the power of God. And whatever he says, he gets. So when he goes out and say, you are the father of many nations, then his word goes forth, create that out there in the spirit realm, and then brings it back and put it in your lap. This is what it does. He made him the father of many nations, and he who gives life to the dead and called those things that be not as though they were. So when you access the, not, the invisible world with your faith, with God's faith, when you access the invisible world with God's faith, you can't do it with your human faith, only with God's faith. And God's faith is the faith that speaks. So when you go out there and say, Father, I just want to thank and praise you. I have given and therefore it is given back to me again. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over you, caused men to give into my bosom. I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name that all of my children, they are disciples, taught of the Lord and great is their peace. And they act they're out there acting like the devil. But, Father, I just want to thank and praise you that they are preachers and teachers of the word of God. They love you with all of their hearts, and they are teaching others the same. Father, I just want to thank and praise you. I'm not moved by what I see, but I am healed by the stripes of Jesus Christ. Don't be intimidated because you are accessing that invisible world that has everything you just said in it. And is ready to bring it to you in the natural realm. That's the God kind of faith. That's God's kind of faith. And that is the reason that whatever you say, let it be the word of God. Let it be the word of God. It doesn't matter. See, what God does, what his word does, the Bible say it changes things. It changes that from what it is to that which you call it to be. And if they're acting a fool, don't worry about it. You got, you got the Holy Ghost on them. And he is working them. And Father, I just want to thank you that Susie and Brianna and Tiffany and little Jeff and, and, and Madison, we just thank and praise you that these are my seed. And you said that the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. And it's not going to look like it. But your faith of God is accessing that spirit realm. That the Holy Spirit is working. And the next thing you know, they're going to come and tell you. Like my son said to me one time years ago. I had been praying for his salvation. And one night he called me. He said, Mom, guess what? I said, I know. And that had been some years ago. I said, I know. He said, I got saved. I said, oh, I know. He said, how did you know? I said, Holy Ghost. Right. I've been praying for you, boy. You couldn't get out from under my prayers. Yeah, that's it. You can't do it. That's you can't do it. Right. Because the power of God, once I speak the word of God, I'm in agreement with God. Right. And once I'm in agreement with God, then he will do those yeah. things that I asked him to do. Amen. That's the word of God. So whatever it is that you're desiring, always get the word of God on it and don't give up. When you start having challenges, when you start having these challenges, when you start talking the word of God, you're in for a contest. And Satan is coming after you with every circumstance, situation that he can, prop, that he can muscle up. He will come. But then you have to stand back and say, come on, boy. I've got something for you. I've got the weapon of mass destruction. And I will take your head off your shoulder today, Goliath. Because you're not afraid. You're not afraid to tell him what God said. You're doing like Jesus did the devil. 
He said, Satan, it is written. And you got the same spirit in you that Jesus got. And you'll say, Satan, it is written that all of my children are disciples taught of the Lord. And great is the peace of my children. Take your hands off of them. The angels of the Lord are encamped around about my children. They're protecting them in Jesus' name. And no harm or danger shall befall them. And neither shall any plague come nigh their dwelling. For God has given his angel charge over them. To keep them in all of their ways. And in their pathway is life. And there is no death. Take him down. What are we saying? We're saying it's the word of God that you got to be speaking. Not what you see. Satan will, he will come in and he will, he'll magnify things and make it look bigger than what it really is. But then you let him know you are the woman, you are the man, and you are of God. And he's saying, my word that I have put in your mouth. So I told you it wasn't your faith. He said, my words that I put in your mouth, yeah. Dr. Morales. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. My word. Yes. They're not your word, Rachel. That's right. That's right. God said, they're mine. Yes. And my word is going to get me what I want every time I want it. Yes. Yes. And he said, and when I put it in your mouth, you speak, you speak it and you can get what you want. Yes. Just don't be moved by what you see. Don't be moved by what you see. Because it is the strategy of Satan to cause you to look at a certain thing. Then you conjure up thoughts about it. And next thing you know, it's messing with your emotions. And then what you know is coming out of your mouth. Right. Well, he is the one who composed this junk. Right. So that he can overthrow you. Right. That's, right. That's the reason he said over there in 1 John 4.4. 4, he said, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even your faith. God overcame everything that he wanted to overcome. Jesus overcame everything that he wanted to overcome. And he said, my words that you put in your mouth, they will overcome the things that you want to overcome also. Be careful to say what God said. But as we always say, if you're not in here, then you don't know what he said. And you will say what he puts in your mind. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. And now you're defeated. Right. That's it. That's right. That's true. We got to use the God Ooh. kind of faith. Yes, say what God say right in the, in the, right in the face of adverse circumstances. Yes. Say what God say. Hallelujah. You can't go wrong. Because you're the winner. That's right. God overcame. He overcame everything he went after with his word. Let us look at Genesis 1. Let us look at Genesis 1. And that's what I wanted to do. Was to clarify your faith versus God's faith. Your faith don't mean a, not that it doesn't mean anything because somebody said one time, if you go out there and see an 18 wheeler coming out there, you better get out the way, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. because you be, somebody say I'd be going to, to somebody's funeral. Oh, yeah. so you better get out the way. You got to use your senses. You got to use your common senses that God gave you. But when it comes to victory in your life, Put your senses away. Put them to the side because it doesn't work. You got to pick up the faith of God. The one who created heaven and earth with his words. 
And guess what? And you're going to create your world too. Genesis 1, glory be to God. I love the fact that God showed me it's not your faith, sugar. It ain't your faith trying to get nothing. It's my faith. And my faith called things that are not in existence as though they were already in existence. In other words, call things the way you want it. You call it the way you want it. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void. Do everybody believe that the Bible is the word of God? You believe that the Bible is the word of God. So that means you don't mind acting on what he said. Is that right? All right now. The earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep. So now this whole vast universe has nothing on it. It is dark out there. It is empty. Has nothing. And the spirit of God. I love it was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And what happened? And there was light. Many people would say, well, that was God talking. Yeah, it was God. Guess who you are? Guess who you are. That's right. And the Bible said that. So don't be all shy when you talk. I am a little God. I'm sitting right there in heavenly places in, with Christ Jesus. I'm sitting at the right hand of the Father. I'm in Christ. And I'm sitting right there. And I, and I have the same spirit that he does. Okay. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And then. And God saw the light that it was good. And. God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. Let us go on. We're going to skip some of this. Genesis 1. Genesis 1. Let us jump down to number 11. Genesis 1.11. Amen. And then God said, let the earth bring forth grass and the herb that yield seed and the fruit tree that yield fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and the herb that yields seed according to its kind and the tree that yields fruit whose seed is in itself according to its kind, and God saw that it was good. And then he went on to say, and God did this and God did that. But the point that we want to make is this. When God says something, Dr. Morales, when he said something, look for it to happen. Look for that to happen. When he said something. The Bible said that the spirit of God hovered, hovered, I call the things that are not as though they were. The spirit of God hovered over the vast universe. All right. It was dark out there. There was no light. There was no vegetation. There was nothing. But the spirit of God was out there. It was hovering over it like it was protecting it. It was hovering over it. And then God said. And that's all the universe was waiting for. Was for God to say something. And when God said, let there be light. The Bible say it was then when the spirit of God 
who was hovering over the dark place came in contact with the word that came out of his mouth. When the word that came out of God's mouth and the spirit who was always there came together, produced it power. It did not become light until God put a word out there and say, let it be light. And the Bible said, you have the same spirit in you that God is. And he is waiting for us because we have his spirit in us. He is waiting for us to speak his word concerning whatever it is that he has given you because the spirit of God that is in you and the word that you speak are coming together and they are going to become a mass explosion. The spirit and the word came together and the power of God came in and did his thing. God is waiting for us to go here, to come here, find what it is that he has given you, find what it is that he has promised you. Then you take it off the page and put it in your mouth. Take it off the page, put it in your mouth and begin to speak it. And begin to speak it and speak it and speak it and give thanks and praise to God like Abraham did and say, Father, I thank you in Jesus name that whatever it is, this is mine. And you keep right on calling it until that invisible ram releases it into your hands. Because you will have what you say. If you don't give up on God, he won't give up on you. But the word of God, just know this, my dear. The spirit of God is in you. And he's just waiting for you to speak his word. Consistently. Continuously. Persevere at doing it. Keep doing it. Don't give up. Continue saying what God said. And as she gave the testimony tonight, y'all don't know what I went through these last eight months. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, I bet you I do. I do. Been there. Done that. But because she didn't give up, It came into, because you had many oppositions, didn't you? It will come to you just like it came to Jesus, just like it came to her and many others. Don't give up. Regardless of how it looks, don't give up. But make sure of this. You're walking in love because faith works it by love. And if you're not walking in love, then I guarantee you, you're never going to get anything. And you're going to be fussing and fighting and crying and hollering and boohooing and wondering why God has taken so long. Check yourself. Paul said, take an evaluation of yourself and see if you're in the faith. You take note of yourself and make sure that you don't have any weeds growing up in your spirit. Make sure that you ain't got nothing in your heart against nobody. Make sure that you're walking in love. Because if you don't, you can take your promise and just chunk it. When the last time you heard that word? Take that word and just take it. It's going bye-bye because you're not going to get anything. Paul said, take note of yourself. Evaluate yourself. And make sure that there's no weeds growing up in your life. 
that you're walking in the way that God commanded you to walk. You're walking in love. You're walking in forgiveness. You are you're being kind one towards another. You're walking in the spirit. And the Bible says, and it won't be long. And God will. And if you're walking out of love, walking in disrespect of one another, go to God, get forgiveness, get cleaned up, and then get back in the race. Because he wants, he wants to give it to you. He has no need for it. The only reason that he has it is to give it to his children. But then if we're disobedient, he can't release it. He cannot release it. But do it. You got it made. You got it made more than anybody in this whole wide world. You got the word of God and you got his spirit in you, which is sure to bring that word to pass. Amen. It'll bring it to pass. Oh, yes, it will. Keep your nose clean. Amen. Walk in the spirit. Sing praises. Yeah. Yeah. Give thanks yeah. because that is a part of it. He's saying all you're getting, get understanding and walking in love and giving thanks and praising God is the part that he said you need to hook on to your prayer. Yes, right. That's it. Amen. That's it. Prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. thanksgiving. Don't forget the with. Because if you forget to thank him, he forgets to give it to you. And I know you don't want that. Amen. Amen. Well, that's all I. <laughs> yeah, I hope you understood that 